In his new biography, Prince Harry of Great Britain makes a number of explosive charges against members of his family. The book also describes his separation from the family and several private encounters with other senior royals. The book, titled Spare, Allusion to the Duke of Sussex's position as the monarchy's spare heir, has been made available to CNN. Since the shocking assertions initially surfaced in the memoir and were first reported by the British newspaper The Guardian, which was able to obtain a copy before its scheduled release, many have been left in awe of them for days. The book, which becomes available in all countries on Tuesday, includes a long list of reproaches, complaints, and grudges from Harry's tenure as a senior member of the royal family as well as information about his highly publicized breakup with the family in 2020, the charges in the book, which the 38-year-old royal has promoted in a series of TV appearances, have not been addressed by Kensington Palace or Buckingham Palace. What we've discovered from Spare is as follows, Harry claims William bit him, one of Harry's most explosive accusations is that Prince William, his older brother, punched him and threw him to the ground during a dispute about Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, according to the book, the claimed altercation between the two siblings followed a chat in which William, the heir to the British throne, referred to Meghan as difficult, rude, and aggressive, according to Harry, the argument got worse until William grabbed me by the collar ripped my necklace, and knocked me to the floor. He describes how, in his version of events, William first visited Harry and Meghan at Nottingham Cottage, their former residence on the grounds of Kensington Palace in London, to talk about the whole rolling calamity of their relationship and troubles with the press. Harry claims that William struck him after he tried to calm down their heated argument by giving his older brother water. He dropped the water called me a different name, and then charged me. It everything happened very quickly. So quickly. My jewelry was torn off as he grabbed me by the collar and threw me to the ground. When I landed on the dog's bowl, my back was sliced by the fragments as they shattered. I lay there for a few period, confused, before rising to my feet and ordering him to leave, in the book. Harry claims that William pushed him to strike back but that he resisted. He claims that after leaving, William subsequently came back, looking sorry, and apologized. The Duke expounded on the confrontation in an interview with British television station ITV that aired on Sunday. He also recalled witnessing William get engulfed in a red mist. He said, he wanted me to hit him back, but I opted not to, saying, what was different here was the amount of frustration, and I talk about the red mist that I had for so many years, and I saw this red mist in him, a request to warring sons from King Charles. Harry recalls going back to the UK for the first time in the beginning of the book after stepping down as a senior royal in April 2021 in order to attend the funeral of the Queen's husband, Prince Philip. The solemn event was the Duke's first meeting with his father, now King Charles III, and William following their explosive interview with Oprah Winfrey. I requested a private meeting with my father, Willie, and my oldest brother to discuss the situation even though I had only traveled home to attend Grandpa's burial. In the book, a copy of which CNN has in advance, he says, to find a way out, I tried to convey my side of the situation. Harry continues. I didn't feel my best. To begin with, I was still tense and struggling to control my feelings while still trying to be succinct and clear, Harry claims that upon further investigation, he learned that his father and brother had came ready for a battle. According to the memoir, Harry's retelling implies that tensions with William were still very high and recalls Charles appealing with his sons not to make my final years a misery. The chapter also showed that the brothers called each other by their respective first names, Willie and Harold. In his story, Harry also alleges that Charles once made a joke about who his real father is. The prince reminisced about his father. Then Prince Charles, 
cracking a joke about his mother Diana's relationship with Major James Hewitt and said that his father loved telling stories, who knows whether I'm actually the Prince of Wales, his father would quip, according to Harry. I'm not even sure if I'm your biological father. Perhaps your biological father lives in Broadmoor, sweetheart, given the rumor that my real father, Major James Hewitt, was one of Mummy's previous lovers, Harry thought it was a unfunny prank. In a now famous BBC Panorama interview with journalist Martin Bashir, the former Princess of Wales acknowledged having an affair with Hewitt for five years. She said that the union began in 1986, two years after the birth of the Duke of Sussex. Major Hewitt's fiery ginger hair was one reason for the rumor, but sadism was another. The news that Prince Charles's younger child wasn't his biological offspring thrilled tabloid readers, writes Harry. The narrative was simply too amazing to be ignored, regardless of the fact that my mother didn't meet Major Hewitt until well after I was born. If the king had any thoughts about Major Hewitt, Prince Harry said, he kept them to himself. The brothers advised their father to reject Camilla's proposal. Harry warned his father not to wed Camilla, who is currently the queen consort, because he thought she would be a wicked stepmother, according to another incident from the memoirs, I remember wondering if she'd be mean to me before the tea. If only she were as evil as all the bad stepmothers in stories. She wasn't though. I did feel sincere thankfulness for that, just like Willie, he wrote, according to the book, she was referred to as the other woman by both William and Harry. William had long harbored doubts about his father's extramarital relationship, which Harry writes, confused him, plagued him, and when those thoughts were confirmed he felt immense remorse for having done nothing, said nothing, earlier, the boys initially officially met Camilla on different occasions when their father wanted to be public about his connection with her, according to Harry, Harry recalls, all he, William, cared to say was that he, William, thought the other woman, Camilla, had made an attempt, which he respected. Close your eyes, it'll be done before you know it, he writes in the book, comparing his meeting with her to getting an injection, Harry revealed how many people he had killed in Afghanistan. While fighting with the British army in Afghanistan, Prince Harry claimed to have murdered 25 people. He claims that in the excitement of battle, he mistakenly thought of his victims as chess pieces, rather than actual individuals, the prince served in Afghanistan for two deployments, the first from 2007 to 2008 and the second from 2012 to 2013, technology has advanced to the point that Harry can now state just how many enemy warriors I've killed, and he continues, I believed it necessary never to shy away from that figure. So, 25 is my number. I didn't feel any gratification from that particular number. But it wasn't a number that I felt embarrassed by either, he adds. Additionally, Harry claims that he didn't think of those 25 as humans. If you consider them to be persons, you cannot murder them. If you treat people like people, you can't actually hurt them. Before the bads could kill the goods, they were whisked off the chessboard like pieces. I had received excellent training in otherizing them. I was aware that this acquired detachment was troubling on some level. But I also recognized it as an inevitable aspect of being a soldier. The Taliban have reacted angrily to the remarks, and several British security and military officials have criticized them, saying farewell to the Queen, the passing of Harry's grandmother, the late Queen Elizabeth II was one event in his life about which many people questioned if he would open up. He did in fact admit that his father Charles was the one who initially called him in September of last year to inform him that the Queen's health had taken a turn. In his memoir, Harry relates how he quickly texted William to inquire about whether and when they were taking a flight to Balmoral, Harry reports that William didn't respond, he claims that after that, Charles called him again and informed him that while Harry was welcome to stay at the Scottish mansion, Meghan was not. 
Harry claims that he replayed the last time he had spoken with his grandma while staring at the clouds for the whole of the flight to Scotland, long phone conversation four days prior. We had covered a lot of ground. Obviously, her health. In fighting at number 10, Harry remembers, Harry claims that as the aircraft started to descend, Megan texted him requesting him to call her. He then checked the BBC website, Grandma had vanished. Pa was the monarch, he writes, he also discusses how he first saw the Queen's body in a Balmoral castle room. I entered while bracing myself. I had only ever been in this dimly lit, strange chamber once before. I made a hesitant step forward, and there she was. I froze and remained there gazing. I continued to glare. Though it was challenging, I persisted, reflecting on how I had regretted not seeing my mother at the conclusion. Years of complaining about the lack of evidence and delaying my grief due to it. I then thought, proof. Be cautious with your wishes, then, according to Harry, he reportedly said in a whisper to her. I hope you're happy, and that you're with your late husband, Prince Philip, the remark Meghan made about Kate's baby brain, the Duchess of Sussex is said to have angered the Princess of Wales by claiming that the princess must have baby brain as a result of her hormones following childbirth and in the months leading up to the royal wedding in 2018. This is disclosed in another section of the memoir, Harry recalls a 2018 gathering with William and Kate at their home, which the Duke claims was an effort to defuse tension between the two spouses. According to rumors, Kate allegedly requested an apology from Meghan for offending her, according to the book, Kate allegedly informed Meghan, we're not close enough for you to talk about my hormones. Harry said, Meghan stated she spoke like way to all her pals, the Prince of Wales reportedly branded Meghan, rude, pointed his finger, and said, it's not what's done here in Britain. Meghan allegedly responded, kindly remove your finger out of my face, according to Harry, according to Harry, Meg claimed she'd never purposefully hurt Kate, and if she ever did, she urged Kate to kindly just let her know so it wouldn't happen again, everyone hugged. Sort of, Harry remembers a number of tabloid scandals. The contentious incident of showing up to a party in 2005 dressed as a Nazi is also discussed in the autobiography. Harry claims that Prince William and his wife Catherine pushed him to do so, which is why he chose to wear it, at a costume party in 2005, a photo of Harry donning a swastika armband on a German military jacket appeared on the main page of the UK's Sun newspaper, when the event happened. Harry admitted fault and apologized through the Clarence House press office, saying he was extremely sorry if I caused any offense or embarrassment to anyone. I regret making such a bad costume decision, the Duke of Sussex stated it was one of his worst blunders and that he felt so humiliated afterwards while discussing it in the recent Netflix documentary Harry and Meghan, in contrast to his prior public apologies in which he accepted responsibility for the incident alone, Harry's new accusation that his brother and sister-in-law were involved. In the new book, the Duke of Sussex recalls the occasion when, while deciding which costume to wear, he called Prince William and Catherine to seek their advice. It is claimed that they advised him to wear the Nazi outfit over a pilot costume. I called Willie and Kate and inquired as to their opinions. Nazi uniform, they said, explains Harry. I returned to the house after renting it and growing a funny mustache, when Harry puts it on, William and Kate howled. More terrible than Willie's leotard attire. Way more absurd, a firestorm, which I believed at times might swallow me, was how he characterized what transpired after a photograph of him wearing the outfit was published in the media, and I thought I deserved to be swallowed up. Over the course of the following few weeks and months, there were times when I felt I might pass away from embarrassment, he continues, he describes his decision-making as quick, severe, 
adding that he was either a crypto-Nazi or had a mental disability. I looked across towards Willie. Although he was empathetic, he was speechless, Harry concludes by stating that the shame will never go away. Nor ought it to, he also addressed the controversy from 2009, when a video of him racially disparaging a Pakistani fellow soldier surfaced. Harry remembers filming himself and a few of his fellow cadets while they passed the time in an airport, when I came to my fellow cadet and dear friend Ahmed Raza Khan, a Pakistani, I said, ah, our little Peaky pal. I panned the group, offered a running commentary on each youngster. Harry writes before stating that he was unaware that the word was offensive, growing up, he says, he frequently saw people use that word without anyone flinching or cringing or making him wonder if they were being racist. Neither did I know anything about unconscious bias. When I was 21, I was surrounded by affluence and seclusion, and the only thing I could think of when I heard this word was an Australian accent. Harmless. He adds that the tape was originally delivered to another cadet for a year-end DVD, but that it ultimately found up in the hands of someone who sold it to the News of the World newspaper. Harry recalls that after the video went viral, his father's office apologized on his behalf. Harry also wanted to write a statement, but courtiers counseled against it since it was not the best plan, sir, I didn't give a damn about tactics. I was concerned that people wouldn't perceive me as racist. I was concerned about not being racist, he adds, adding that he apologized to his friend immediately and was accepted, he claimed to be aware of my lack of racism. No big thing, says Harry. However, it was. And his easy grace and forgiveness only made me feel worse, drug use in adolescence and losing his virginity, Harry, who currently resides in California with Megan and their two kids, also acknowledges using cocaine when he was 17 years old, as Harry puts it, of course. At this point, I was doing cocaine. I was given a line at a shooting weekend at someone's rural home, and I've since performed a couple more, he said, it wasn't much fun, and he said that while it appeared to make everyone around him happy, it didn't make me really pleased, however, it did change how I felt, and that was the major objective. Feel. Various. I was a really depressed 17-year-old lad, ready to attempt virtually anything to change the way things were. Harry continues, Prince Harry has already acknowledged using drugs when he was younger. According to a previous CNN article, he was accused of using marijuana and drinking while underage in 2002, when he was a 16-year-old student. His father decided to send him to the drug rehab facility Phoenix House UK for a day after learning that he had admitted to using marijuana and alcohol heavily when he was 16 years old. In another section of his memoirs, Harry talks about having a inglorious event where he lost his virginity. Harry claims that an older woman who loved horses quite a lot and treated me not unlike a young stallion is the person who helped him lose his virginity. In the book, he leaves out the woman's name. Among the many details that were incorrect, he writes, it happened in a green field outside a crowded tavern. Harry continues, obviously someone had seen us. Harry also admits in his memoir that he replicated his late mother's trip through the Paris tunnel, where she and two other people were killed in a fatal vehicle accident. In an effort to find solace following his mother's passing, Harry was 12 when Diana passed away in 1997, Harry claims he received an invitation to the French capital and a driver to watch the 2007 Rugby World Cup semi-final. He asked the driver if he remembered the Pont de El Alma tunnel, where Diana's car had wrecked in 1997, on his first night in the city, he requested to travel at 65 miles per hour, 104.6 kilometers per hour, which is exactly the pace Mummy's automobile was allegedly traveling at the time of the crash. According to authorities, there was no reason anyone should ever die inside it, 
Harry continues, before stating that he had always envisioned the tunnel as some perilous passageway, inherently deadly, Harry adds that he instructed his driver to pass through the tunnel once more, it had been a really poor decision. In my 23 years, I had plenty of stupid ideas, but this one was particularly misguided. Although I had convinced myself otherwise, I didn't really want closure. I secretly hoped that when Jamie Lothar Pinkerton, a former private secretary to Harry and Prince William, handed me the police papers, I would experience the same level of incredulity. Doubt. Instead, Harry claims that was the night when all uncertainty vanished. I had assumed that going through the tunnel would put an end to the anguish, or at least temporarily halt it, after a decade of constant pain. Instead, it ushered in the beginning of pain, part two, he adds, the prince discusses his memories of meeting mourners and the remorse he experienced while strolling outside Kensington Palace after his mother passed away in 1997 in a clip from Harry, the interview, which was aired in Britain on ITV on Sunday. Harry also claims that at his mother's funeral he shed a single tear after her passing. He tells host Tom Bradby that everyone knows where they were and what they were doing the night my mum died. I shed a single tear at the funeral, I confess, and you know I go into depth about how bizarre it was and how actually there was some remorse that I felt, and I think William felt as well, by strolling around the outside of Kensington Palace, when Harry shook the mourner's hands, he felt the tears on their hands. He says, there were 50,000 flower bouquets to our mother. And there we were shaking hands, smiling. Yes, I watched the videos and went over everything. We were shaken by their moist hands, which we couldn't understand until we realized that they were wiping away all of their tears.